To promote my new flower shop, I had one place print my business cards, another print my brochures, and a third, my signs. Now my roses aren't red, my violets aren't blue, my geraniums look dead, and I don't know what to do. Staples can help your business stand out with signs, banners, and brochures that are a true reflection of your company. And now at Staples, spend $50 or more on print and marketing services and get $5 off your next in-store purchase. Now my business is blossoming and I'm spending less green. Exclusions apply. In-store only. And 6 18 Seven four. Welcome, three. welcome to Partners in Health and Biz with your host Wendy Meyeroff. Tune in every Saturday 9 a.m. for great shows about obtaining and maintaining health, business, and finance. Learn from the experts here at pihradio.net. Call into the studio with your questions and comments three four seven nine four five seven four three three. And now, broadcasting from the Partners in Health and Biz studio, here's Wendy. Hi, folks. Happy Saturday morning to you. At least I trust it is for most of you here in Maryland. I just want to put in a word to remember our uh, kinsmen, so to speak, other Marylanders, the ones in Ellicott City. If you saw the news and if you haven't, it's been a, a massive flood just tons and tons and tons of damage. And so if you know any way to help these folks, whether it's uh, it's not just donations, although you can probably check GoFundMe, but besides that, I would definitely suggest you uh, look at things like donating Goodwill clothes, um, anything, any kind of help that you can find a way to get to Ellicott City. I know you can find word about it online. So anyway, I am expecting, and for some reason he's having call-in problems, but I am expecting a great guest today. Uh, the show is about mouthing off, and uh, I think he's uh, finally got in. Is that you, Doctor? It is. I'm here. Okay. Well, let me just uh, tell people a little bit about you and uh, give them a background of why you're here, and we will move forward, okay? Great. Okay. So um, this is Dr. Charles Doring, and he is a native and a graduate of the University of Maryland School of Dentistry, and then he completed his uh, dental practice residency at Georgetown University Hospital, He is currently a partner in the dental practice of North Bethesda Dental Associates in Rockville, Maryland. I always want to say association, sorry. Um, And I will tell you, uh, I could give you, even his short bio is two miles long, so I've summarized it. Uh, He has done legislative work. He has awards, including a mastership award from the Academy of General Dentistry, Uh, But a couple of things he does that most people don't think of uh, is treating the medically and mentally challenged patient. And uh, as someone who's been writing about aging America for 20-plus years, the fact that he's a member of the medical staff at Rockville Nursing Home and the Hebrew Home of Greater Washington is is wonderful stuff because we don't hear about dentists uh, treating older Americans too often. And, in fact, he teaches at... Back at the University of Maryland School of Dentistry, he teaches uh, geriatric dentistry. For those of you who don't know, geriatrics is older patients. And dental ethics, and thank God, proper prescription writing. And in case uh, he has uh, not enough to do um, in that humongous spare time, he he and his wife, still here in Maryland, obviously, engage in model railroading, Gardening and cooking. So uh, how's that for a sort of brief description, Doctor? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. (laughs) So let me tell people (laughs) what got you here. Um, I got in contact with the uh, American Dental Association, and they put us together. And it's all because I read an article in the March-April issue of Saturday Evening Post, and it's called Putting the Mouth Back in the Body, which... To be honest with you, it's not the greatest headline I ever heard, but okay. And it's talking about how the dental profession is 
very often over the years, starting way back, and maybe even today, you can address that as we get really started. Dentists have been pushed behind the uh, quote-unquote regular physicians, and um, there's even a quote I pulled out from Charles Mayo, who is the founder of the Mayo Clinic, uh, the Mayo Foundation in Rochester, Minnesota, and it says here, he acknowledged that some of his patients have complained about being left toothless, but he was convinced that the oral cavity was the seat of most illness. In children, the quote goes, the tonsils and mouth probably carry 80% of the infective diseases that cause so much trouble in later life, he noted. And therefore, it says, total clearance, uh, a.k.a. the removal of all the teeth, remained widely recommended. So, thank God, I don't think we do it that way anymore, <laughs> Dr. Doring. But tell no, me we don't. Why we should... <laughs> thank God. Why should we uh, all understand why dentists really need to be better respected? Even today, we, we need to do it. Well, I, I do feel myself personally uh, respected and well-regarded with my medical colleagues, uh, as you cited Um, my background in hospital dentistry and geriatric dentistry, uh, rarely a day goes by where I'm not uh, consulting with a physician or a physician's consulting with me uh, about the oral condition that's going on in the mouth that may affect systemically the whole body and uh, vice versa. There are uh, conditions and uh, medications that the patient may be on that are adversely affecting the uh, the teeth. Uh, for example, uh, medications that cause uh, dry mouth, what we call hyposalivation or xerostomia. Um, when the mouth dries up due to um, many, many medications can cause this as a side effect, uh, the teeth are very prone to decay, and unfortunately we see this a lot in our elderly patients. So there's this Um, oral environment going on, as you stated, it's the first part of our digestive system, and we swallow this, we inhale this, so it's important that the mouth, tongue, uh, teeth are are clean and, and limiting the amount of bacteria. Okay. And you, you say elderly patients, and we've, I see journal articles with this, and as I say, I've been reporting on Aging America for 20-something years. Uh, when we say elderly, are we still talking about people 60 and 65, or are we just simply talking really, really much older? And even, you know, even in your 80s, you may not be elderly in the image that we get of it. So, uh, is right. I, I I had a 95 year old patient in this week in my private practice, and uh, he uh, does um, walking and and spinning on his bicycle, and he has a full <laughs> intact dentition. So, uh, you know that, you know that just uh, states there used to be the thought as you got older. Uh, it's just natural to lose your teeth, and that's not the case. You can live a full life with a full intact dentition under the right conditions, and certainly this patient uh, has that. The other flip of the coin is uh, there are patients that I treat that have been in motor vehicle accidents, electrocutions, that are uh, young patients, um, even younger than I am. So um, there is... And they need skilled nursing care. They're not yeah. able to take care of their own uh, teeth, in some cases not able to feed themselves, feeding tubes and things like that. So it runs the gamut when we say um, care for the medically compromised. It really encompasses all ages for those who really can't care for themselves. Right. And it, it doesn't even have to be permanent. I had my arm in a sling once, and brushing my teeth was driving me nuts, not being able to do it in the other hand that well. You know, it's uh, so, uh, but uh, when we talk about older adults, and since you teach geriatric dentistry, I uh, saw that the ADA, the American Dental Association, actually has sections related to different age groups, and that, of course, includes uh, the 60-plus group. And with boomers exploding, 
how well do you think we are doing in teaching dentists this issue or having them at least come to CME classes that add a little to this knowledge? Are we doing it uh, across the board, not just with ADA, but state by state, or just hither and yon at all? Well, my course in geriatric dentistry teaches students how to care and, and plan to treat uh, medically compromised patients in their dental office, and it also encompasses uh, doing portable dentistry. Many times the patient may be homebound or in a long-term care facility or, as you said, a, a rehab facility is just a short-term stay, but they still need care. So right. that, you know, we have to cover both angles, and I get requests to speak uh, around the country on this topic. And so I think, as you say, uh, very soon, 20% uh, of the population is going to be over 65. And as we said, you know, 95-year-old may have a full dentition and take care of their teeth. Um, but I think we need to prepare all adults as they enter into a stage where they might develop a health issue that might hinder their ability or cause dry mouth that we best prepare them uh, through routine checkups and periodic x-rays and uh, making sure that if there is a challenge that they're ready for it. And then we uh, work with dental hygienists to make sure that there's fluoride applications, proper hygiene training. Uh, we also work with nurses' aides, nursing staff in long-term oh, care good. facilities because they're the ones that are going to be providing the the daily care. That's one of their duties, so we really stress that. And at least once a year we do an in-service with our uh, nursing assistants to go over that, to have them practice on each other, because it is a strange uh, occurrence yeah. to have someone – uh, come at you with a toothbrush if you have dementia <laughs> or other issues, uh, it could be a bit of a challenge. So uh, we we work with them to overcome these barriers and, and get uh, some of its behavior management and um, getting a rapport and, and approaching it slowly. And, and there might be a certain time that's best for the patient and, and each one, it has to be individualized. How you you can't do the home care the same and use the same type of toothbrush. It has to be um, specific for that patient. Sometimes yeah. uh, arthritic changes may be uh, making a wider, uh, you know, adhering a tennis ball to the handle of a toothbrush, for example, so the patient can better grasp. Little tricks like that that we teach in our courses. So. Um, I think that's helpful yeah, that's, for the patient as well as the nursing team. And so you're you're teaching this at other places. Do you think enough schools across the country are teaching this uh, to older patients and people with any sort of disability that keeps them from good oral care? Do are we doing enough of it yet? Yes, I, I think it's in the curriculum of all the schools uh, oh, across the, the country. And uh, the American Dental Association came up with a, a free CE course, I believe it's seven or eight units long. It's a, um, a self-study to teach uh, practicing dentists also how oh, to good. care for the older patient. Okay, well, as I said, what brought us together was this article, and it's talking about the sort of division between MDs and DDSs. And one of the things I learned and I, I looked up, I saw some info that says some dental experts are trying to sort of form a collaboration and create an all-in-one med school. Because, you know, in medical, a regular quote-unquote med school, People go and they do all sorts of specialties, orthopedists, plastic surgeons, cardiologists. Why shouldn't the dentist just be in, a, in an all-in-one med school and not have to go to the XYZ school of dentistry? Uh, so what do you think about that concept? Well, historically, uh, dentistry was taught when formal medical education started in, in the early 1800s. Dentistry was 
uh, included in medical school. And, oh. and 